time again You have proven You do just what you say Though the storms may come And the winds may blow I'll remain steadfast And let my heart learn When you speak a word It will come to pass Great is your faith Yes, welcome. Glad you're able to view this uh, teaching and this time as we deal with chapter 19 in the book of Revelation. And I'm excited about this because the, the whole scene begins to shift from the worst in the world to the best in heaven. But uh, this is good. But uh, we're going to look at this and trust that I can say some things that would help you to understand. And uh, together we grow in the knowledge of what God has revealed in the book of Revelation. The word revelation means re a revelation, a revealing of. And so that's, we should know more after we finish a chapter, we should know more after we finish the book. And so I trust you're learning and growing with this. All right, uh, chapter 19. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. And then again the crowd says, Hallelujah. And they say, Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And... Uh, this is certainly a powerful proclamation. We understand the great multitude in heaven as the potential of like millions and billions of people, really, because of the old, from historically from uh, Genesis chapter uh, one, where he uh, creates Adam and Eve and uh, till sometime just after tomorrow or today uh, this all of the people that he is rapturing and of course at the same time there will be the resurrec resurrection those who are died in Christ Jesus but from all the ages will be resurrected so like we're talking just an innumerable amount of of people. And so this great multitude, are, they're just happy, saying, Alleluia, salvation, glory and honor, power belong to the Lord God. And then, interestingly, that it identifies what we've just looked at in chapter 17 and 18, in that it's, he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. And I am not a person that looks for vindication. I, I don't want to get even with everybody that's done me wrong. I just, my mind works a little different than that. But the, the reality here is what he's saying is that God is going to get even for those every evil and every corruption that has uh, been done to the body, to the people of God, to righteous people, to they're, they're going to be avenged when they see this destruction and this judgment upon evil. And uh, this... Uh, 
It says, Hallelujah, in verse 3, her smoke will rise forever and ever. Now then the fourth verse says, And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. Now we've been introduced and we've heard about these four and uh, 24 elders and the four beasts. We've heard of those uh, several times. And that's the, we said 24 elders represent, uh, identified as the a representation of the 24 uh, patriarchs of the Old Testament and the 24 uh, disciples of Jesus in the New Testament. And so that's why the, this group is, they're in the elite group, so to speak. They're there and they are the ones that they uh, worship at the throne. That's where they live. That's where they dwell. That's their, and they say, hallelujah, or amen, hallelujah. Now then a voice comes from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and the sound of many waters and the sound of mighty thunderings saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. And so there again, that's, an, that's another voice that's been given. And verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. All right. This is what we understand in the rapture of the church that which would have happened uh, from this time seven years earlier and the rapture would have taken place. And those seven years are a time, whoever is raptured and resurrected at that time, they are forever sealed uh, for God. But they, they exist, they are alive, and they have a celebration of some nature for seven years, rejoicing, blessing, and uh, understanding the comfort and the blessing of God in their lives. And so that's, uh, that's a good picture. And verse 7 uh, mentions this marriage supper of the Lamb. And of course, we understand <laughs> the, uh, there are some cultures that even now do a, a wedding celebration for seven days. But seven years is but then for God, uh, a day is as a thousand and a thousand is as, as one day. So we, we, we'll have a little time to do these things in heaven. But okay, verse 8 says, And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. So in some way the identification of, the, of white and of the clothing will represent the righteous acts of the Christians. And oh, God help us to have our own lives in order so that we wear, uh, our robe will be uh, a representation of this righteousness that represents the saints of God. Verse 9, then he said to me, write. Now this, this is the same voice that we've just heard. So we know it's not God's voice nor Jesus' voice. And so, but it seems to be the singular of this crowd. Like the whole crowd is speaking, but then the singular because it represents, he said, this voice said to me, write. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. In other words, oh man, I, that, I just get excited thinking about that because 
what what we're saying a sentence like that would simply mean we're we're pushing into uh, as you go in in driving a car you may put in first second or third or your automatic transmission will do it for you but whatever you you go up in gears well this here is just saying this is uh, this is what what's happening here uh, these are called to the marriage supper of the lamb these are the true sayings of god this is we're shifting into the eternal gear and uh, oh hallelujah anyway verse 10 and i fell at his feet to worship him this is john the writer of this book and he says i, I fell at his feet to worship him and here's the clue of where we identify too with his speaking voice but he said to me see that you do not do that in other words don't worship me jesus didn't tell anybody that and the father hasn't said that to anybody but this voice is saying that see that you don't do that i am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, maybe you've heard that terminology quite a bit, but I think to me it really brings life because what, what he's saying here is that these, we're seeing these prophecies fulfilled by, by the... Uh, low there's lots of them and so he says but i'm not responsible for that that's that's jesus so let's give him let's give god our praise and when we testify of jesus we are also entering into the spirit of prophecy and so it's uh, it's the voice of hope and future and health and victory and everything all right, the next few verses uh, are, uh, <laughs> as uh, I was, I like it because we got Jesus riding a white horse. It says, verse 11, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True in and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His arms were like the flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Now that's very interesting. He had a name written that no one knew, but the book of Revelation tells us this same reality in chapter 2 two when it's speaking to the church in revelation it says the same thing a new name that no one but the person that receives that name understands now i don't know how that <laughs> works but in eternity we'll have time to learn the names of everybody and we'll have mental capacity to do so. Um, so he did, he knew his name. He knew what was there. And he's on a white horse and his eyes are as flame of fire. And wherever we've seen in the book of Revelation, the, in the first chapter, it was those eyes were of flaming fire. And uh, he had many crowns and uh, he is now here verse 13 says he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God now he's called the word of God in the Bible in John chapter 1 and verse 1 which is the beginning of the disciple John's letter called the gospel of John and he writes there in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so this it comes out here 
at this very closing time, he's clothed with a robe dipped in blood and that his name is called the Word of God. And so in uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 63, it talks about Jesus uh, treading the winepress and that his robe becomes uh, smeared or, or uh, marked by the blood of the grapes that he's treading out. But it's the picture of this, what it says here, uh, that his robe is dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. So that's the real Savior. Hallelujah. And he went to the cross for us. His blood was shed to forgive us our sins and to rob the enemy, Satan, of every power and authority that he had. Oh, that's what is the reality of revelations here. Verse 14, and the armies in heaven clothed in white linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. The armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. So I, I don't know, but I just, if it's up to volunteers, I'm in that group. I want to be there on my white horse. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. And there the name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Wow. And that's who he is. And that's who we have worshipped for myself for pretty much the entirety of my life. I've known the story of Jesus and uh, loved him because he loves me first. So I love him and I trust that you too. Uh, then in the uh, uh, next section here, but, but this is just a... There's just so much awe and, and greatness. And it's hard to picture this. I, I don't know how that's going to look in, 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 <laughs> in our understanding. The horses need, uh, they don't walk on clouds, but this, it seems like, the ones we ride, they're, they're walking on clouds. <clears throat> so it's good. God is good. He, and of course we know, and I actually, I, I kind of chuckle to myself because I have heard more on television and reporting and different things in the last few months <clears throat> about unidentified flying objects and the idea that there's other sources and even other worlds or other beings or whatever that uh, can create spacecraft. But I'm not worried about that. I know that this is true. And whether there's others uh, pre uh, the creation of Adam and Eve time, I'm not arguing. But it's interesting that you don't hear much and they've, in fact, they're, they've kept it quiet because they don't want to panic the people. But now in the end time and <laughs> we we're maybe supposed to be afraid, but we're not. All right, going 17, four more, five more verses here in verse chapter 19. But just the whole scene so far is simply a, a a, a tremendous victory story, a, a tremendous victory announcement. It, it's like you could, uh, you, you're pronouncing already the victory that we have not with our own physical temporal eyes seen, but we know that this is the victory that's coming and so we can rejoice with it 
as the group pictured here for John was doing. All right. Then I, verse 17, then I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying, to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him, Jesus, who sat on the horse and against his army. But here's, <laughs> then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence. And we talked about that in, in the previous chapters. By which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image these two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. So that's, <laughs> you know, yeah, it, it can sound gruesome. It's, uh, but it's unique in this way that here this voice is speaking to the birds and to the creatures and saying come and feast and there will be a literal uh, tremendously devastating uh, time the sword in the mouth of Jesus or coming out and that's a depiction of his authority and power and how that works I'm not prepared to say I just believe that it he can do that I just believe that we have a picture in the Old Testament of 185 soldiers uh, of the army uh, coming against Israel and they were going to, they were way outmatched the Israelite army, but in the morning when it was time to fight and the Israeli army came out to go to war, 185,000 people. Now, you can choose to say, okay, I don't believe those figures or how did they know? Did they actually go around? Well, they took over three days, a large, the Israeli army and their attendants, it took them over three days to gather the goods that that army in their anticipation that they were going to win and sort of settle down and possess the land. So they had lots of goods and it took... Israel. So anyway, God can do this and uh, he, he is so sufficient. And, and maybe just here, let me say, he's sufficient for my need. He's sufficient for your need. And uh, if the Bible tells us this, the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse and then all the birds were filled with their flesh. Uh, I just believe it. I, it's just, it's the word of God. And if God, we understand in the biblical pattern that he spoke and the world, were, the world was made. He spoke and birds, animals, and eventually he got around to, well, not eventually, on the uh, sixth day he created Adam and Eve. And uh, so if he can do that, he can do everything, anything. So just, uh, and the consistency of the Word of God 
And again, the proof that the Word of God is consistent and true is far more uh, provable than most of the history books you will ever read. And they don't even compare to having uh, history books that have been written, you know, say a thousand years ago or whatever. They, there's copies, one copy, maybe two, maybe three. But the Bible, they have reference from literally thousands and thousands of records saying the Word of God is true. So this is true. And when you read your Bible, just help, ask the Lord to help you to understand and to hear it. So, but let me, <laughs> I feel like getting a little ahead of myself here, but next chapter, chapter 20, we'll deal with uh, the simple solution to the end. Now, I'm sure that every one of you that is listening to my voice have heard of a hell. You don't want to even talk about it, think about it, whatever, but you've heard that there is a hell. And you may be even have told people to go to hell. Now, I don't tell anybody that. I invite them to go to heaven. But anyway, uh, and you know there's a heaven. There's an instinct in our hearts that says there's hope, that there's life, that there's eternity. And so in that simplicity, we'll look at chapter 20 and see where the continued destruction of evil and the optimal uh, reign of Jesus Christ on earth for a thousand years with you, the Christian helping, being uh, leadership, replacing the old corruption of Babylon and the woman and doing things right for a thousand years and then the eternal clock will kick in. God bless you. And uh, I'll hope to hear, I hope you will hear more from this book and this chapter. And again, take the book, read it yourself, and just don't even worry about whether you believe it or not. Just ask God, you know, is it true? And uh, He will show you something great. So God bless you. Thank you. I put my faith in Jesus.